In the previous video, we configured OSPF for this multi-area topology that we see on screen. What we want to do in this video is give a series of verification commands to check out our configuration. Let's begin our verification on router R2. After all, router R2, that's an area border router. It's sitting at the boundary of a couple of different areas. And let's give the command show IP OSPF interface brief. And we can see that we've got four interfaces or sub-interfaces participating in the OSPF routing process of one. This is the process ID. We see that a couple of these belong to area zero, the backbone area, and a couple of the interfaces belong to area one. And we see the IP addresses of the interfaces that are participating in OSPF. We see the cost for each of these interfaces. We'll talk about cost in an upcoming video, but for now, just understand that it's a function of bandwidth. And we can also see the number of neighbors available off of each of these interfaces. And the loopback interface obviously does not have any neighbors available off of it. Another great command we can give is show IP protocols. And this is going to give us a lot of information about our OSPF routing process. We see our router ID. We see that we could load balance across a maximum of four equal cost paths. We're routing for these networks. And we configured Fast Ethernet a little bit differently than we did the other interfaces. We explicitly configured the Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface to participate in Area 1. For the rest of the interfaces, we gave network commands under Router OSPF Configuration Mode to make them participate in the OSPF routing process. We also see from which routers are we getting routing information. I'm learning from routers R1, R3, and R4. Let's take a look at our neighbors. We can do a show IP OSPF neighbor command, and we see that I have three neighbors, and I've fully formed an adjacency with each of those. But notice that router R1 is a DR. It's a designated router. We'll talk about designated and backup designated routers a bit later in a future video, but we're going to have a designated router on a segment such as a fast Ethernet segment where we might have multiple routers all connected to the same subnet, maybe plugged into the same Cisco Catalyst switch. And instead of forming a full mesh of adjacencies from every router to every other router within that subnet, what we can do is have every router form an adjacency with a designated router and a backup designated router. That's going to make things a little bit more efficient for us. We can see out of which interface we connect to each of our neighbors. Let's now take a look at the OSPF database. Let's do a show IP OSPF database command. And we'll get much more into this database when we talk about LSA link state advertisements. For now, though, just notice that portions of the database are for area 0 and portions are for area 1. For area 1 on screen, you see that we have router link states, net link states, summary net link states. And all routers in Area 1 should have an identical view of what's going on inside of Area 1. And we'll see later in an upcoming video that Type 1 LSAs populate the router link states area of the database. Type 2 LSAs populate the net link states. And Type 3 LSAs populate the summary net link states. And we've been looking exclusively at Router R2. I do want to go over to Router R4 for a moment. And on router R4, I'd like to reissue that show IP OSPF database command that we saw on router R2. And notice here, the database does not appear as large, does it? We just have entries for area 0 because router R4 does not have any interfaces participating in area 1. Under the summary net link states, we see the network addresses that live in a different area. These network address spaces live in area 1. And even though we're going to be reissuing some of these verification commands throughout our OSPF discussion, for now, that's going to wrap up this verification video.